the wounds go deeper than words and you can't tell a soul I may not know what you're going through and may not can make that high mountain move but one thing I've learned that I really want you to know if it matters to you it matters to the master wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your world gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain or your real Let's pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us here today on a Sunday morning to fellowship, to pray, to encourage one another, God, but also especially thank you for letting us come here this morning just to praise and worship your name, God, the almighty God, king of the universe that came 2,000 years ago that died on a cross, God. Thank you that you gave us the opportunity to be here this morning. And God, with all the craziness going on on in the world right now and all the and all the persecution that our brothers and sisters are facing all over the world God we know we know that all of that is just a passing that's just a passing thing unto the, your kingdom comes God we pray all these things in your name amen well hello everyone a quick announcement for uh, brother Stan comes up here does a welcome next week uh, we're, do, we're doing that young adult luncheon. So if you're a young adult between the ages of 18 and 45-ish, uh, if, you, if you're a little bit over that, that's okay. You can identify as a young adult and join us. Uh, it's going to be right after church in the contemporary service at 12 p.m. We, we, child care is provided. If you do need that, just let us know. If you do need that, and also let us know if you're coming. We already have several of you that have registered, so I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here. We're going to have a barbecue, so I, I know we're Baptist. I know every time we have to have a meeting, we need food. 
So, and that's awesome because that means I get a lot of free food. So, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys uh, there, and we're going to be just, just discussing cool things about what does it mean to be a young adult at uh, First Baptist Church, Summerville. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Ethan. And uh, Ethan just got back, and the youth from their high school trip, I think he said he got in about 1230 last night, right? And our RA boys are somewhere. Um, They've been at Linden Valley, but I heard they may be getting home a little bit earlier than uh, maybe expected, but I uh, had a great time. I was up there with them Friday night and uh, uh, most of yesterday, and uh, we, went through, uh, we went through some rain, and so it was an interesting uh, evening Friday night, but uh, thankful for the boys and for our adult leaders who went with them. So be praying for them as they uh, travel home back today. Now, to those of you who are visiting with us, thank you for coming and joining with us. And we want to welcome those watching by live stream. We always have many people that will comment and share some things about our live streaming. So thank you for joining with us today. And if you're visiting with us in the pew in front of you in the rack, you'll find a connection card. And if you would mind filling that out, we would appreciate that so much. And uh, I think it's next week we're going to have something brand new, right, Ethan? Uh, we'll next week, next Two weeks. Week. Two weeks from today. So something to look forward to. Uh, but if you'll fill that out and you can put that in the offering boxes or hand it to Brother Ethan or Stephen or myself, we would appreciate that uh, so much. And so we are glad that you are here today. Now this morning we're doing things a little bit different and I appreciate Stephen and his willingness to work. But uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to start preaching right now. And we're going to end with a song service. We're going to flip flop it. Just see how you like that. Um, but uh, no, uh, Monica and I are going to have to slip out as soon as I get done preaching to get to Jackson so I can baptize my granddaughter this morning. Uh, and so Ethan will also be baptizing one or two uh, folks at two the, uh, this morning in the contemporary service. So be praying for that. So God is at work and moving. Isn't that awesome? We just praise the Lord for that. So uh, if you have your Bibles, I would invite you please to turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. This is our fourth part of our series in the midst of suffering and uh, I, I have on this last point if you've been keeping your handouts from all the other weeks uh, this the par portion of today is a little bit different than the first three uh, handouts you've got so you want to hang on to this one because it's a little bit different uh, than the other ones but uh, we've been talking about how to deal in the midst of suffering. And we looked at several different things, as you can see there on your notes. We looked at the reasons for suffering. Sometimes it's our own doing, sometimes it's others, sometimes it's just when we stand up for righteousness and we do the right thing, sometimes we will suffer. And then sometimes it's just God's plan. There's maybe no real rhyme or reason to that, but it's just uh, something that, that God has put into place. And then other times we just need to realize we live in a broken world. And the reality is, is suffering is all around us. But then also realizing that there's results that come from suffering. And you can see there that sometimes it silences the enemy. When people, uh, when, when they see Christians who are suffering, but they don't quit, they don't give in, they don't give up. It, uh, it helps to silence those that would oppose Christ and those who would say, well, if Jesus really loves everybody, why would he allow so many hurtful and harmful things to happen? But it does. But God brings us through those things. And sometimes through our suffering, God will bring other people to Jesus. And then he teaches us some things, and we'll talk about that a little bit more this morning. He teaches us patience. He helps to strengthen our faith. He helps us to be more understanding, sympathetic with others who are going through trials and difficulties. And then the last time we looked at the blessings of suffering. Can suffering actually bring blessings? Yes, it can. One thing, it can bring us closer to Jesus. And if we get closer to Jesus, I guarantee you, you are going to experience his blessings but also just experiencing the peace. As you know, Brother Jack Gresham, pastor at First Baptist Church Macon, passed away just two weeks ago, and, and, our, uh, and his funeral was Thursday, and, and it was an awesome service in and, and which uh, uh, Brother Jack's life was just shared by his family and, and others and what a witness he was. But then 
Miss Flotil has experienced such peace and assurance even in the midst of the heartache and the grieving over the passing of her husband, Brother Jack. You see, sometimes suffering can bring us closer to Christ and it brings us in a more intimate relationship to where we experience peace that the Bible describes beyond human understanding. And then we have that assurance, that hope, that promise of eternity. So the question this morning is that we want to ask is then, how should we as Christians react to suffering? Now the passage that we used last time, we're going to look at again today, Hebrews chapter 12, 5 through 11, deals with the chastening of the Lord. In other words, uh, when, when, when we are out of God's will, He will correct us. He will discipline us. And you say, well, that may not necessarily be suffering. Sometimes it is, but what we're going to share today can go both ways to a suffering uh, in, in our bodies, whether it's physical, emotional, or, or spiritual, or in the sense of, of just having to be disciplined. So I want us to think about that. It's a difficult question. How, how should Christians react to suffering? Because everybody who lives in this world, as Job said, man's days are few and full of trouble. We can all testify to that. We all experience difficulties and trials, some more pronounced, some more uh, serious than others. But we are all dealing with the effects of sin and death. And we know that even Jesus Christ suffered while he was here upon earth. So how do we approach this? Well, if you have your Bibles, in Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to read verses 5 through verses 11. And if you will, please stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word. And the writer of Hebrews says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present but painful nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it father may you bless your word and help us to better understand how we as your people should react to the suffering through the disciplining through the through dealing with the trials of life so that the world can see a difference in us So we ask now that you will help us to understand that, and we pray that in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, this morning I want us to look at three negative reactions and then one positive reaction that you will find. First of all, I think we find here that it says, do not ignore God's teaching. Look again in verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Now, why does he say, do not despise that? How does one despise discipline, correction? How does one despise when they experience suffering, persecution, trials, tribulations? Sometimes it's by the fact that we just don't agree with it. We just don't like it. Sometimes even to the point of getting angry and fighting against it. You see, ignoring the fact that God is trying to teach us something can put us in a world of hurt. And sometimes that very attitude can get us into trouble. Don't ignore God's teaching. Did you know that God wants to do so much for us even more than we can imagine or think? Do you know that God wants to provide more for us, do more for us, work more in us? But we're the ones who sometimes ignore what He desires. And you see, every instance that we go through in life is to help teach us, to help us to become more like Him, to help us to be able to present a stronger witness to a lost and a dying world. And so when we go through trials and tribulations, we don't need to be that fact or that person that would say, I just despise this. I don't like going through this. Now, nobody likes going through that. As he says later down, you know, uh, it's painful to us. 
Nobody likes to deal with dealing with suffering and persecution and discipline, but it's necessary. And God uses that to teach us some very important truths. So in the midst of suffering, we need to ask ourselves this question, what is God trying to teach me? What is God trying to teach me? I don't know what your trouble is, what your difficulty is, what your suffering is today. It could be physical, mental, emotional, relationship-wise, spiritually. But whatever it is, the question is, is what is God trying to teach you? Because you see, we need understanding in this life. How many times have you heard, it just doesn't make sense? And it doesn't sometimes. But if we will stop and pause and say, God, what are you trying to teach me? we will get, then begin to get a better understanding. The second reaction that we find is also in verse 5, and that is the one of pitying yourself. Look again in verse 5. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. And sometimes that word discouraged kind of leans to the fact of, uh, of feeling sorry for yourself. Have you ever thrown yourself a pity party? How many people showed up? The reality is, if you throw yourself a pity party, nobody's going to come. You know why? Because it's not fun going to a pity party. And secondly, nobody wants to go to a pity party because it's all about you and no, nobody else. But you know, pity and parties have been going on for a long, long time. He says, do not be discouraged. Do not get faint-hearted. Do not lose hope, is what he's saying, when you are rebuked, when you are are disciplined or even when you're going through suffering because many times people get to a point where they say why me lord why me to which someone has well said maybe we ought to say why not me god why not me some will say god why did you let this happen to me even the prophets even had their pity party remember jonah he he, he had a pity party because he went and he preached and, and people responded and, uh, to the Lord and, and they turned from their sins. And because he had said, you better repent or God's going to destroy this place. Then he went up on the side of the hill to watch him get destroyed. But they did exactly what he preached. Repent or God's going to destroy you. They repented. He's sitting on the side of the hill waiting for God to destroy him. And then got angry about it. God, what do you want me to do? And we just kind of have that pity party. Elijah was another prophet who had a pity party. He stood up to the prophets of Baal. There were, there were 850 prophets there, counting all the ones of Baal and others. And he stood in front of all of them in the nation of Israel. But then when Jezebel made a word that she was going to kill him, he took off and ran. And ran hard, ran long, ran far away, and sat under the juniper tree and had a pity party. How often do we throw pity parties for ourselves in the midst of suffering the question is do we trust god more or less because you see when people get into that sense god why are you leaving me god why aren't you doing something god don't you care for me and then we begin to feel sorry for ourselves don't fall into that trap of the pity party but then there's a third reaction and that's one of what is called false acceptance go to verse 11 if you will now he says now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present we can all attest to that we can say that yes but it's painful you know we can agree with that nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness well that sounds pretty good only problem is that doesn't happen all the time notice how the verse notice how the verse reads Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. You see, some people respond to the Lord's correction, His discipline. Sometimes they respond to suffering, whether it's their own fault or somebody else's fault, or maybe there's no good answer about it. And some people will very piously say, well, that's just my cross. I guess I'll have to bear it. Now, that sounds like a real positive note, doesn't it? That's just my cross, and I'm going to have to bear it. Or other people would say, well, I'm just going to suffer for Jesus. May I, may I say as kindly as I can, 
we who live in american as christians we do not really understand what suffering for jesus really is when a person becomes a believer in afghanistan their lifespan is about two weeks if the authorities find out we have worshiped freely here all of our life we have been blessed in america and we need to be thankful for that but we need to be careful to say oh well that's just my cry i'm going to suffer for jesus i'm going to tell you friend we may be laughed at we may be mocked and we may be made fun of and people may not take us seriously but i'll tell you my friend we as an american and as christians we have not really understood what suffering and being persecuted for christ's sake is and we need to be mindful for our brothers and sisters all around the world who are struggling you see some people feel like i don't really deserve this but you know i guess i'll just have to live with it while all the time in their heart they're saying god why this isn't fair this isn't right why should i have to suffer why do you heal one person over here but you don't heal this person over here why do you let somebody live over here but you take somebody over here why do you heal somebody and you don't others and why, why do you not why do you not do miracles like you used to do he does we just don't understand everything and god is trying to teach us in every situation and circumstance in life that we find ourselves in so those are three negative reactions ignoring despising god's teaching just despising it or getting to the place of that pity party or that self-righteous attitude well I, it's just my cross i'm i'm just gonna show everybody that i can handle it while inwardly you're being very angry with god so how should christians truly respond to suffering one word and this is tough it's gratitude now in your previous notes i had the word endurance but as i was praying and studying and going back over the message for this week it was gratitude that deals with our attitude preacher are you saying that we need to be thankful for problems listen to philippians chapter 1 verse 29 for to you it has been granted on behalf of christ not only to believe in him but also to suffer for his sake notice the word granted granted that that's that's the idea of a gift and so what paul is saying to the philippians is he's saying that god has given you this gift of believing in him but just as we receive that gift of believing in him we also have been granted we've been given the gift of suffering for his sake now that's not a message we want to hear <laughs> oh we should praise the lord and give gratitude for our suffering First Thessalonians 5 18 says in everything give thanks he doesn't say for everything give thanks he says in everything as our boys were surviving the rainstorm in their tent some of the tents got wet and some of their pillows got wet and it was an interesting evening uh, I must confess because the word will get out I did not stay in a tent so uh, but I did go down there to check on them before I went to bed and and um, and and, and and one of one of the boys said this this just didn't fun this this isn't fair you know why why did this happen i said man this will be an experience you will never forget <laughs> i don't think it helped him at that moment but by saturday morning it was a a laughing matter you see our attitude is so important that we've been given the privilege we've been granted the opportunity not only to believe in him but to suffer for him and the bible tells us that anybody that desires and wants to please god by living a godly life you will suffer persecution it's coming now here's the reality our suffering will never compare to the suffering christ did for us think about what he did the bible says in philippians 2 8 he humbled himself even further going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on the cross and he didn't deserve it 
that wasn't fair. Oh, but it was a gift. Jesus endured his suffering, and his suffering and pain and his anguish was much deeper than the physical agony he went through because he bore upon himself the sins of the entire world. And he experienced all of that so that you and I could be saved. That's what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, something positive, something wonderful, a joy, man, something to rejoice in. But look what he says. He endured the cross, despising the shame for the joy, the pain, the suffering, the persecution, the ridicule, it all came. But once you got through it, Jesus saw the joy at the end of it. And that joy was is that you and I who put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ are now a part of his family and we'll spend eternity with him is what, in what he really desires. That's pretty awesome. And so we find that we need to have gratitude. And so how do we do that? Three simple steps. And this is tough. It's tough. First of all, expect it with faith. Expect suffering with faith. It's going to come. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may, be, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. See, the apostle Paul understood that. He understood that. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 through 10, you can read the listing of all the things that Paul experienced, the beatings, the hunger, the threats, the ridicule, the imprisonments. I mean, he, he endured all kinds of suffering for Christ's sake. And you know what Paul came to a point? He came to expect it. And he came to expect it with faith. Why is it that we think we can go through life without any problems? If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who knew no sin, came to earth and lived among sinful men, and he experienced all kinds of difficulty, ridicule, neglect, abuse, and then he was crucified on the cross because he took every man's sin upon himself. Why do we think we're going to get by with nothing, no problems. My friend, if the world hates him, they're going to hate you. Listen to John 15, 20. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you, Jesus said. And our verse that we used in the first two parts, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And then Philippians 1, 29, which we've already read. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. In other words, we need to expect it with faith. John Wesley had this covenant prayer, and I want to read this to you, to show his commitment and his understanding of expecting difficulty. Here's his prayer, quote, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. What a prayer by John Wesley. Lord, whatever you will, that's what I want. Whether it's suffering, difficulty, persecution, I'm going to expect it with faith. And then secondly, he says, we need to embrace it with praise. Embrace suffering with praise? Embrace chastening with praise? Well, who's a good example of this? Well, Job in Job 121, he said after he experienced all of the loss of his children, his herds, his flocks, even his own health, what does he say? Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, 
be the name of the Lord. Amen. Question, can we do that? Do I do that? Do you do that? What about the Apostle Paul? In Acts chapter 16, the Bible says he and Silas were beaten and then put into prison. And at midnight, they began to moan and groan and complain. Woe is me. Is that what the Bible says? No. At midnight, Paul and Silas began to sing praises to the Lord. Were they hurting? Were they sore? Yes, they had been beaten. Matter of fact, they'd been beaten so bad that when the Philippian jailer, jailer got saved, he took them home and washed their stripes and healed them up and, and bound them up for healing. They were beaten. They were put in prison for doing the right things. And at midnight, they were singing praises to the Lord. Casting Crown sings a song, Praise You in This Storm, and listen to these words. And I'll praise you in this storm. I will lift my hands, for you are who you are, no matter where I am. Every tear I've cried, you hold in your hand. You never left my side. And though my heart is torn, I will praise you in this storm. Embrace it with praise. That's an unusual thing. How can we praise the Lord in the midst of suffering? Well, it could be worse. It could be more disastrous. Do we hurt? Do we suffer? Do we grieve? Do we groan? Yes, yes we do. But we can do it like Job when he lost it all. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the Lord is given and the Lord is taken away. And listen, we know this, God is a loving God and he's going to give everything that we need. And so how do we respond to suffering as Christians? We need to expect it with faith. It's going to happen. It's going to come. So we need to be ready to respond correctly. We need to embrace it with praise. Praise the Lord that he counts us worthy to go through some suffering and persecution. What he did for us, we should be willing to do whatever for him. But then lastly, endure it with promise. Endure it with promise. In James chapter 1, it tells us that we should count it all joy when you fall into all sites, all various types of persecutions and difficulties because it brings about patience. Now, that word patience doesn't, doesn't mean a passive waiting like you're, no offense, Dr. Hawkins, but like you're waiting in the doctor's office, okay? Sometimes you have to wait and wait and wait. Now, the interesting thing is, Doc, you don't, people don't wait for you in the office. They wait for you in their cars, right? Uh, and uh, have been but it's not that passive okay i just got to sit here and wait 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 no the idea of this greek word is not that passive waiting it's an active endurance like you're running a marathon yeah i may not be running full blast i may not be running as hard as i can but i'm keeping on keeping on and that's what that word means so how can we endure suffering? How can we endure persecution? How, how do some people uh, uh, around the world that are suffering for Christ, how do they have the strength? Because they are, they are enduring it with the promise that God has given them. Think about the promises that God has given. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the very end of the age. I'm there with you. I'm present. No matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, I can promise you, my friend, God is there. All you got to do is call out to him. But not only that, but then he promises that he will provide. Remember, the Apostle Paul came before the Lord, prayed three times, God, take away this thorn. And three times the Lord said no. But then he said, my grace is sufficient. Later, Paul would write these words in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches we need to expect it with faith hey it's going to come we need to be ready for it we need to embrace it with praise and we need to endure it with promise now can i make a confession to you and i'll have to i'll have to confess this real quick i was preparing and had my sermon notes all ready to
print out. And when I hit print on my computer, the window disappeared. And a little box popped up and said, Microsoft Word has encountered a problem or an error. Yeah, it was an error. And I lost it all. My first reaction was, no. And that was heard throughout the office. I was frustrated. And then it was like, duh, what are you preaching on Sunday? <laughs> Expect it with faith, embrace it with praise. <laughs> Endure it with promise. I said, God, my memory's not as good as it used to be. And I don't remember where all I got that stuff because it was in my notes. And Ashley looked at me and she said, our church secretary, well, God's got something better for you to say. See, I needed this sermon. Suffering, persecution, problems, difficulties are going to come. But listen to what Job said in Job 23, verse 10. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. That's my, that's my goal. I want to come through it as gold. That means I need to stop and take inventory in my life that when trials and suffering and troubles and difficulties come, how do I react? How do I respond? And I had to confess, Lord, I am a miserable example of what I'm going to preach Sunday morning because I wasn't even doing it in my own life. Now, I'm still upset with word, but I can praise the Lord. He got me through it. You see, suffering is not the evidence of God's absence. It's really the evidence of God's presence. And the reality is, is God works through our suffering and discipline and brokenness. So the question I want to ask you this morning is, when you go through troubles and difficulties, do you run from God or you, do you run to Him? I don't know what you're doing and what's going on in your life today, but Maybe you're struggling. Well, here's the invitation. God says, come to me. Let's stand together and let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And I pray that, Lord, no matter where people are in their walk with you, I pray that if they're, if they're like me and struggling with how do we respond and react to suffering, Lord, may we have the right attitude. So, Father, I pray right now that you'll guide each one in the decisions that we need to make. Lord, may we not run from you, but may we run to you. And there may be somebody here today that's never given their life to you, and I pray that, Father, you'll just help them to realize that you're the only hope for their salvation. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Stephen, lead us in our invitation. Let's sing, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have Thine Own Way. Christmas child to watch. child open the boxes for the first time is just it's incredible we are so excited many of the children receive the shoe box for the first time in their life we pray that these boxes will be used to bring a lot of happiness and joy but more importantly the gospel to each part all these little children around the world no greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly oh my goodness 
This is what these shoe boxes are all about, to go out and to bring a hope of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm just so amazed at what God does each and every year. This is an opportunity to impact the lives of millions of children, just like you've seen. But we need more boxes for next year. Every box is an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, and God bless each and every one. Boxes are they're all around the church. The instructions are there. If you'll pick one of those up and get that filled up, bring it back quick as you can. We're going to stand together now and sing all hail the power of Jesus' name. While we sing, the choir is going to come up and take their place. Stand with the choir. Join us as we sing. Be seated out there. You know, a few, a few weeks ago, we recognized some of our longtime choir members that had retired from full time service in the choir. Uh, they got to that stage in their life where it, it was time to, to not sing in the choir anymore. We had a few that weren't here that day. Uh, Donna Moffat was is one of those. Uh, Donna was so faithful for so many years, and she sat close to me and endured all the harshness of being that. Close to me all those years at rehearsal. And the whole time. Bless her heart. Thank you, Donna. For your, Donna, had, she had surgery. She wasn't able to be here with us today. We had our choir retirement day. Uh, but that's just a gift from your choir to honor you and thank you for so many years of faithfulness. All the way from the stage. Thank you, Donna. I hope that's the last one we give out.
give you the honor and the glory and praise for what you do. Every time a soul is saved, let us rejoice. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed to Sunday school. Uh, take note, we're nine minutes early. <laughs>